Michigan at Wisconsin from Madison. Camp Randall, oldest house in the Big Ten. Seen a few good running backs in its day. Jonathan Taylor, one of them, early first quarter. Taylor finds a way into the end zone, one yard out. Wisconsin up 7 nothing. They reviewed it, but upheld. And that capped a 12-play, 75-yard drive. It would not be the last time you saw the home fans celebrating. They were positively giddy with this one. Taylor, 72-yard burst. 23 carries, 203 yards, two touchdowns, his ninth career 200-yard game. Um, I don't see a lot of white shirts there. It, this was not good. It wasn't good on offense either for Michigan. Shea Patterson uh, in the second quarter down 21 to nothing, throws it into traffic, deflected, intercepted. Uh, Patterson gets benched for Dylan McCaffrey just before the half. You're not happy about it. Uh, look, I understand that, but it was just not the Maize and Blues day. Final minute of the first half, already up 21-0. Jack Cohn, 25 yards, dives into the end zone. Sconson up 28-0 at the half. Those two engineering students know it. Michigan, fine program academically, not great athletically today. Wisconsin becomes the first FBS team in the last 15 years, by the way, to start the year with 10 straight shutout quarters. Eventually, They'd get on the board, get something going on offense. But at this point, they're down 35-0. And now Wisconsin, they get into some trouble. Eric Burrell leveling Dylan McCaffrey. The flags come flying. He gets targeting, ejected. So Michigan tacks on 14 points that are kind of meaningless at the end. That score doesn't look close. The game wasn't even as close as the score. Michigan got absolutely manhandled on offense and on defense. They got out coached. They got out everything. Congratulate the Wisconsin Badgers. We're now very much in the mix of things and we'll move up with that number 13 next to their name. Wisconsin, the three and a half point favorite. They cover easy. The over comes in. It was 45 and the total there, 49. Back in HQ presented by Wells Fargo. So uh, Barton Simmons, Big Ten country. They had a lot of mixed reviews today for teams. Let's start. I like to start positively, but let's go the other. Let's get it out of the way. Michigan, they bench their quarterback, Shea Patterson. They bring in the backup who was concussed. It's weird. They got to go back to Patterson. He has family members taking real shots at the coaching staff after the game, and they get blown out. What the heck is going on? Whew. I mean, that's a bad look. That's a really bad look, and, and I think in part, Michigan's a victim of their own expectations, and the expectations were unreasonable this year, preseason. I mean, they lost a bunch of guys to the NFL draft. They've got a new offensive coordinator coming in that's never called plays before. They're switching their offensive system. Uh, they have to replace a lot. Uh, no real running backs with experience coming back. And, and here we are, and you've got a Wisconsin team that's the same old Wisconsin except it's got a quarterback that looks pretty confident. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure we should be surprised that Michigan's struggling a little bit, but to get beat the way that they got beat today is not a good look. It's not a good look for those players, those coaches, anyone in that Michigan building right now. So it, it was a, a failure of epic proportions, and, and, it, and it concerns you if you look about what's still to come on this schedule. As good as Ohio State's looking right now, as talented as this Penn State team is, uh, there, there's some issues that Michigan's got to figure out really quickly. So is it fixable, right? I mean, you walked right into the, the, a nice little question there, which is, okay, it's not where it needs to be. The idea of a coach is supposed to be able to coach him up and fix it on the fly. Can Jim Harbaugh, who's making a lot of money and beating a lot of people but not really winning important games, is it fixable this year? Well, it, it feels like this was a bit of a desperation heave. Jim Harbaugh going and hiring Josh Gaddis without even interviewing him. Um, switching offensive systems. He's been a, a downhill pro style guy to his core throughout his coaching career. And he, he, he throws that out, uh, heads to a more sp spread system. Uh, and, and it hadn't worked so far. And so at this point, they've got to figure out who they are. They've got to get an identity and they've got to own up to it. I mean, even today, the offensive line, which was supposed to be the strength of this team, one of the best in the country, couldn't handle that Wisconsin defensive front. And so 
it's getting back to basics if you're Michigan. It's, it's getting to be able to run the football again with success, being able to throw and catch, and, and settling on a quarterback. You know, they've been going back and forth with these two guys, uh, Dylan McCaffrey and Shea Patterson, for a couple weeks How now. How are you going to put Shea Patterson in the lineup based upon what his brother tweeted and the way that went down unless there is a serious apology that's public coming because you read me what he said actually it was actually instagram like like it was graphic yeah. and personal yeah and, and i'll just leave it at that so how do you put him back in well i i think if you're jim harbaugh you've got to approach this situation man to man with shea patterson if shea patterson hadn't said anything if shea patterson's being a good soldier then that's who you're dealing with, that, and that's who you're coaching. And, and I think that uh, it's, it's more about, is Shea Patterson the guy that's going to give you the, the, the best opportunity to be successful? It's more about making a critical decision about where you want this quarterback position to be. Hey, maybe it is Dylan, maybe it is Dylan McCaffrey. Maybe that is the answer at the quarterback position. But if it is, you need to make that move, and you need to stick with it and let Dylan McCaffrey grow and, and gain confidence. Uh, Shea Patterson's a talented kid, but uh, he, he's got to – uh, sort of take some ownership in this position as well. He is not playing uh, up to expectations, uh, for, certainly for himself, but, but also uh, for the outside of the world as well. All right, so it is uh, a situation where there's more questions than answers right now as they head back to Ann Arbor. Meanwhile, the kids from Madison staying home, should have a lot of fun tonight partying. <laughs> uh, that should be a really fun town to be in, and there should be some folks in a good mood. You probably get a good cheese curd. Uh, tonight, and, and, and I'm sure he'll jump around more than once or twice. Wisconsin now, inside track, best bet of the Big Ten teams to end up in, in the Final Four. I mean, what do you want to say about on Wisconsin? Well, it's very clear they're the best team in the West. I think you can say that without hesitation. Wisconsin is the best team in the Big Ten West, and I'm not sure it's close. Uh, can they beat Ohio State? I think that's the next question. They're the only team that's shown that they've got the consistency, the playmaking ability, the identity to go and beat a team like Ohio State who's playing as well as anyone in all of college football right now. So what they did to Michigan today I think speaks volumes. The, 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 I think the most important um, revelation that we found today in that game against Michigan was the quarterback position, at least to me. Look, Jack Cones looked good against South Florida and Central Michigan, but that doesn't mean much. What he did today against the University of Michigan, the, the numbers aren't gaudy, but when you look at what Georgia does down in the SEC when they blow teams out, when they play in college football playoffs and, and SEC championships, Jake Fromm puts up numbers like that, doesn't make mistakes, knows where to go with the football, is calm, cool, collected. That, that, that's what Wisconsin's been missing. Alex Hornibrook threw the many, too many interceptions, turned the ball over. Now you got a guy that looks like he's comfortable in this offense and the offense is taking off. And, and, and uh, not to mention Jonathan Taylor, who was just outstanding yet again, e even in limited duty with cramping issues. Uh, just an unbelievable performance. Over 200 yards, a couple of rushing touchdowns. What would he have done if he didn't have limited duty? No doubt. I mean, he, he was eating that team up. And the offensive line looked great. And then the defense. I mean, the defense is back to a Wisconsin defense after – getting a little soft last year. Uh, this is a, a team that everyone in college football should be concerned about.